Welcome everyone. This meeting will be held in accordance with California Government Code Section 59453, subdivision of the Alpha, uh, Ralph M. Brown Act, California Government Code Section 54950, Series Resolution Number 202234, and the Federal Americans with Disability Act. While this meeting will be physically open to the public, given the state of emergency regarding the threat of COVID-19, members of the public may also participate and comment via the application Zoom. Zoom information was posted on the agenda. Welcome everyone to our Sirius City Council today, May 23rd. I now call this meeting to order. Can we please get the roll call? Council Members District 1, James Casey. Here. Council Member District 2 is vacant. Council Member District 4, Mike Klein. Here. Vice Mayor Brett Silvera. Here. Mayor Javier Lopez. Here. Today we have an invocation by Tim Gionosa from Big Valley Grace Community Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Father, we thank you for uh, gathering us here today. We thank you for the, the men and women who serve our community so faithfully. They give so much of their time, their effort, their energy, uh, their thought for what goes on here. Uh, giving them a big charge, Lord, and to know that you will equip them and those who seek wisdom will receive wisdom. And you are the one who gives great knowledge to all who ask. And so today, Lord, would you do that? Would you guide? Would you direct? Would you do that which is absolutely best for this community and the people of this community? Give great wisdom to those who are in leadership, to those who are serving, to those who need to make decisions that affect each and every one of our lives. Lord, may it honor you in each way and each way. Name that we pray. Thank you. <clears throat> no presentations today. Moving on to citizens' communications. While the City Council welcomes and encourages participation in the City Council meetings, adopt the rules allow no more than five minutes. Resolution 2007-106 for expressions of non-agenda items, matters under the jurisdiction of the City Council and not on the posted agenda may be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the City Council from taking any action on any matters which is not posted on the agenda, unless it is determined to be an emergency by the City Council. Citizens are entitled to address the City Council on any agenda item subject to the five-minute provision. Anyone wishing to address the City Council must adhere to the rules of decorum. The rules of decorum are posted outside the chamber doors. We'll begin with in-person comments first. We do have a yellow card. And John Warren for Citizens Communications. Good evening, council members. And uh, thank you, whoever fixed the audio here. Seems to be working quite well. <laughs> um, I had a, a question regarding the uh, expenditure of the ARP money that the council approved and discussed uh, a couple of meetings. There was an amount left that had not been uh, spoken for or had not been approved by the council for uh, spending and uh, uh, for other expenditures. And if I remember correctly, it was about 300 plus thousand dollars that was left that had not been uh, spoken for any projects. So I was wondering what that, balance might be today and what the money might possibly be used for or set aside for because there is a time called for uh, spending uh, spending those dollars. So that was my question this evening. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do our best to get back to you. I don't know if we have, do we have any information on that at the moment? Okay, I don't know the current balance remaining of the first installment. 
Um, but we do have until yeah. December of 2024 to decide what to do with it. Okay, to decide. And then to till December of 2026 to actually spend it. Okay. Um, is there any way, maybe Alex, we can get an update on that at the council meeting, just for information only? Sure, we could certainly do that. And if, if we could possibly email to Warren um, that information as well. We could provide an update at the next council meeting. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes, sir, go ahead. On the, on the time frame, I thought the first uh, round, first amount of money had to be spent by December of 24, but there's a second round coming. Correct. So that would be like push out to 2026. 20, no, the entire two, two installments, you have to decide what to do with them by December of 2024. For both installments. For both installments. Okay, and we haven't worked on the second installment yet. Correct. Just the first. And it all has to be spent by? December of 26. For both rounds. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Do we have any others in the public that would like to comment? Uniquely serious. Want everybody on the city council take a look at me. Am I familiar? I hope so. Was I familiar on the 9th of May? Hope I was then too. The people on the council there, nobody spoke up. What was done to me on the 9th of May, 2022, should have been stopped. It was uncalled for. And part of that, seems to be in what uh, the city council or the mayor constructed on the quorum, which is posted outside here. And part of that is uh, persons attending the meeting shall refrain from the use of profanity and rude or derogatory remarks. You tell me none of that was done on the 9th of May, 2022. I am really surprised the people in the city voted for these positions that you have and you don't try to protect something on an open forum like this. This is on the internet for the rest of my life. I've had to apologize to people here in town to let them know that many of the things that those people said were not true. And the things I did do, they weren't against the law and they weren't against the codes. I did exactly what I was able to do by the city codes. And some of the people in law enforcement, code enforcement, they know I go by the codes. I've read it to them. I've showed them evidence before and what have you. But yet you, the city council, let this go. With an exception, one person called me, or I called them on another issue, and they wanted to apologize to me. And they told me, that they should have stepped up and said something and stopped that right then and there. And I watched every one of you at that particular time on May 9th, 2022, and nothing was said. I would expect something from Mike Klein. He's been around for a long time and he knows when something's not right. Maybe the rest of you don't, but he does. And I expected something from him, but I never heard anything. So, you know, to let these people degrade me and not be able to get probably an hour to explain all these things they accused me of, because believe me, for each one of those things they accused me of, there was an answer. But they never come up front and said they did something wrong, did they? Yeah, none of them are guilty of anything. But I found the guilt in some of them, and that's why they're mad. And that they made it sound like these things happen within a short period of time. No, it's been 33 years of constant bombardment from some of these particular neighbors with what they want to do and infringe on my right and people that probably don't want to come up forward and say anything because they're afraid. People this series, if you're listening, like I've told you before, if you say, if you think something's wrong in your neighborhood or something that you don't like, that you're not sure of, call the police department, call the city clerk, call a department you think might be able to handle your problem. Don't sit there idle and just assume that those people you voted on are going to take care of every whim that you have that you think is going to get fixed. Thank you.
Next person, please. I have a complaint about my wa my water bill that I would like to explain to the council. Can you please state your name, please? On with it. Can you please state your name? Nawatha Reed. Thank you. Okay. My daughter is going to read my notes for me. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Cheryl Welch, and I'm going to read mom's notes. And I was involved with this, and basically we are here to find out what our next steps could be. Um, it says around. April 12th, I went online to check my water bill. I was shocked when I saw that I was being charged for 43,000 plus gallons of water usage for the month of March. I went to the utilities office and talked to one of the young ladies there and told her there was no way possible for me to have used that much water. The bill was about $405 and her normal bills is $150. She told me that I had used the water between March 12th and March 21st. Um, I was out of town for those days, so mom was out of town. She informed me that I was responsible for the water because the meter had registered it and the meters were very accurate. I asked her if there was someone else in the office I could talk to. There was no one else in the office for me to talk to, but she did give me the phone number for someone in the office. I think her name was Angie. I called and left the message explaining why I was called and left my phone number for a return call. The call was returned the next day. I explained to her that I'm 80 years old, live alone, only water my lawn once a week, do laundry every other week, run my dishwasher once a week, et cetera. It was impossible for me to use 40,000 plus gallons of water in 12 days when there was not a wet spot anywhere on my property. She also told me that because it was on the meter, I was responsible for the water usage. She did tell me that if I called public works and told Sam that I had found the problem and fixed it, he would drop the fine. I told her I did not find a problem and I did not repair it, so I could not do that. That day or the next day, the water maintenance people came out and took the meter to check it and replace it with a new one. That afternoon, they returned. When I went out to ask them about it, I was told that my meter passed with flying colors. What they actually said was that it is 98, their test is 98.3% accurate which means there's 1.7% or almost two people out of 100 that they check that is inaccurate. Um, at that point, I came home and I went into the office and spoke with the interim city manager, Alex, who said he would look into it and get back to me. I spoke with him the next day as well. He said he was going over the report. I left two messages later and he never did return my call nor did the assistant or the, his uh, clerk. On April 15th, pg e came out to check, his, check the lines because of the water leak, uh, she was told. And I, to the best of my knowledge, they did not find any leak. That afternoon, Sam from Public Works came and said, my meter passed with 98.3%. He said they replaced it because anytime they take a meter out to check it, they replace it with a new one. I questioned it because I know of no company or business that has enough money in their budget to replace equipment that isn't broken. The next day, TID came out to check their lines because Sirius Public Works was repairing a leak. I have no idea where PG&E or TID got their information. I assumed Sirius had called them because they were doing some work there and needed their lines marked. Um, I was told that it was probably my pool overflow and that it had been running and going straight into the sewer system. I spoke with Pool of Scott's Pool Repair and Remodeling that has been in business for close to 40 years. There is not an overflow that goes into the sewer on this pool. Um, next date when TID came out, let's see. I assume Ceres had called them because they were doing some work there and needed their lines marked. It's a, and then she just goes on to say, my daughter and I both talked to uh, Alex. So at this point, we have gone through all of the city's people that we can possibly talk to. We were told that a $75 fine would be dropped if we found a problem, but there is no problem. You can't go through, and after speaking with Scott, you cannot have 40,000 gallons, which is twice the water that's in her pool around her property without having something flooded. 
I personally went under the house to make sure there was nothing flooded under there. We've talked to the neighbors, we've walked around the yard, there is no water anywhere. So for someone who lives by themselves, who is 80 years old, to have her bill triple in one month for water that does not exist, I personally believe she's in that 1.7% of errors. So where do we go from here? Can I ask a few questions? No, absolutely. Okay, a couple questions. Number one, since the new water meter has been, been in place, how is, the, how is the water flow? What's, what's the reading? The reading is accurate. We actually, when they put in the new one, we would test it with a quart jar or a gallon and watch it spin. It is very accurate at this point. Has there been any repairs done around the pool? No repairs, no, no anything? No sprinklers that are broken? Nothing, nothing. I mean, I've been involved with it. Mom's been involved with it. Her pool guy has been involved with it and double checked as well as speaking with Scott. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. So it's been for a two week period, they said you read 45,000 gallons. And since then, over a two week period, it's been normal. Oh, yes. And she was out of town for five of those 12 days. So, Sam, question for you. Is, is there a way to test moisture content or something in the ground? Because if they haven't done any repairs on this, on this for the pool around the property or anything like that, you know, my inclination is it could be a faulty meter. It could have something, something been there that, that, that even if the water didn't go there, I was involved in a lawsuit um, probably 25 years ago where a, a turtle got stuck in a flapper valve and everything went backwards. And the property owner had his property flooded and everything like that. And, you know, talking to them and I've been in contact with you, none of the neighbors have said anything about flooding or anything like that. You know, what can we do? Councilman Klein, uh, our city staff went out and replaced the meter. And normally on every 10 years, we have the water meter replacement because the meters do, do tend to go bad and uh, the gear mechanism and the meters tend to fail sometimes. But in this case, we tested the meter for 25 minutes at the courtyard at three different intervals. And that's why we determined they were at 98.3% uh, uh, passing. But this came over a two week period, okay? And since then, you've changed the, changed the water meter since then, and they've never had any issues since. So, you know, not that I want to waste water, but, you know, it seems sort of ironic. You know, you did it for 20 minutes, but this was over a two-week period. So, I'm lost. Well, it, I mean, it's kind of puzzling, but at the same time, I mean, we did whatever we could do. I mean, a water usage is a water usage, and there's... There's, uh, I mean, we, we go by, I mean, we, we tested the, the meter and we let it run for 25 minutes at three different uh, settings and it, and it passed. And, uh, we, and we replaced it with a new one and the one new one is functioning correctly. So there's nothing, I mean, there's nothing I could, I could say or do. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure exactly where to go from here. Mike, I got a question, uh, Sam. Uh, what was the bill? I have the bill right here. The bill was for $405.45 for 43,916 gallons of water. And the dates that you, you mentioned were the dates that she was gone? She, it was from March 12th through March 21st and she was out of town five of those days. Five of those days. And uh, so I guess my next question is, do you, your bill has not been that high since then? Well, I mean, and if it was you, never that high prior to that either. Yeah, I mean, you could leave the faucet on for twelve days running. You no, could, you, I mean, I'm, I'm just curious if there was if there we weren't there, but if there, if you guys didn't notice anything, um, we we did. I think what we could, but I, I don't know how the council feels about it. But maybe if there's a possibility, we can help her out here. Well, I I, I don't I, know if it's, it's, Mayor, it's at, our, at our discretion or if it's one of those. Well, I was going to waive the uh, the uh, the penalty fees. I was going to take that out. 
And $75 for a penalty fee when nothing was done or nothing was wrong, we, we did, that does we, not seem quite fair. Well, we did replace the meter band. I mean, that's, There's you know, we want- There's 1.7% error. Is it possible that she's in that 1.7%? You can't tell me for sure that she is not. Mr. 1.7%. You said it, that it was 98.3% accurate. So there's 1.7% that is not accurate. That means two, almost two meters that you test are incorrect based on your tests. Yeah, but the 1.7%, does that jive at the 42,000 gallons? Mr. Mayor, if I might. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I recognize this is definitely a customer service issue. I, I wouldn't recommend that the council try to make a decision this evening. I don't, I don't know that the municipal code gives us the ability to waive the fee at this point. Um, I say let us continue. Although I think we have, we have worked with the customer. Um, we've tried to address the situation. Um, I would suggest at this point, let the staff uh, take one more crack at trying to assist the customer, um, and then we can report back to the council the resolution. So I guess, Mike, Mike before that, um, Sam, just looking at this from a troubleshooting standpoint, you replaced the meter, right? Um, it hasn't I, happened since Ms. then. I'm May like, I, I'm, I just, this is well, not well, not well, not an agendized item. Uh, we're we're going absolutely fairly I, far I just, just in, into ours. something that's not agendized. So, m my recommendation would be to uh, what I what I indicated previously. No, I understand, but I'm just telling Sam just to just to take that in consideration when you guys go go through the line items that you guys troubleshooting into your notes. Okay, that's all I'm saying. All right, Council, any more questions, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir, go ahead. I, I might add, I know you can't give us the answer today. Surely this is not the first customer to complain about their water reading being inaccurate. I, I know that our, the swimming pool we have holds 11,000 gallons. It's a pretty good sized pool. You know, my mindset that my neighbor there uh, would have to fill up you know, four of her pools to have that 40,000 gallon. But my, my real question is, this is probably not the first complaint that we've had about meter reader and, and their water bill. Maybe I would just ask to check into that. Because you all know that you can test something and it works fine. You take your car to the shop and you can't, you know, they can't solve the problem because it doesn't happen. It's an intermittent problem. That's what I would suggest. Can I add one thing, uh, Mayor yeah, and Council? Uh, we do have an MMS system in our uh, facilities at the Public Works. We actually get good, could detect every hour usage of, of any meter throughout the city. Right. And there is a series of events that went through the, the past 12, week, 12 days that it shows, or for the whole month, that it shows where the uh, where the usage were uh, were uh, you know what was happening during during what period. So I, I I was I was I'll be more than happy to show the residents how we determine the flow rate for for any given month for any given hour within that month period. Right. So. Okay. Ma'am, I understand you're frustrated. I, we, we do hear you. Um, if you give Sam an, another opportunity to to talk to you about this and. Let's see what we can resolve. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, and I just want you to make sure you realize some citizens don't realize, and I didn't before, that if this is not on our agenda for tonight, we can't make any kind of an action on this. Of course. During anything that happens that. during city communication. So we'll look at it and try to have an answer for you when we can. Thank you, and thanks oh, for letting thank us you. speak. Any other members of the public on citizens' communications? Excuse me, <clears throat> moving on to Zoom. Do we have anybody on Zoom? Their hands raised? There is no Zoom wanting to speak, and we did not receive any written comments. No emails? No. Okay. Okay, now the public comment period is now closed. There is no appointments. Uh, members of the council, is there any conflict of interest? Seeing none. Consent calendar. 
All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine in nature and will be enacted by single motion, unless otherwise requested by an individual council member or public for special consideration. Otherwise, the recommendation of staff will be accepted and acted upon a single roll call vote. Excuse me. Is there anyone in the council that would like a consent item pool for further discussion? Five and nine. Five and nine. Any others? Any members in the audience that would like an item pulled? Anyone on Zoom with their hand raised? There is no one on Zoom. Okay, and now we'll look for a motion. Motion to approve consent calendar one through four, six, seven, and eight, and 10 through 13, including number 12 that has three different resolution numbers, 2249, 2250, and 2251. Second. Roll call. Council Member Casey. Yes. Council Member Klein. Yes. Vice Mayor Silvera. Yes. Mayor Lopez. Yes. Motion passes 4-0. Item number five, Public Works Monthly Report for April 2022. Well, you know, I read this monthly report every month, and, and the thing that disturbs me is uh, one reoccurring thing. It's vandalism at Ochoa Park. Uh, you know, we just approved uh, art money to finish the park, uh, to bring it up to standards and things, but we keep on having to repair and vandalize anything. You know, I know we have portable cameras. Uh, we put into the art money for some more portable cameras. So is there anything that we can do with, for a period of time to work with PD to get the cameras over in Ochoa Park to try to curb the vandalism that's going on? That's a brand new park. And it's like every month, that's all I see on there is vandalism. Could you hear me? Oh. Council Klein, uh, what happened is uh, at the Ochoa Park, we did introduce new obstacles, new features uh, for the playground. So uh, some of the features are being you know, vandalized by adults. And we've, we've seen that time and time again. Uh, we're trying to make our best effort to have the adult not to abuse the, uh, these, uh, these playground equipment. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it happens during after hours. And uh, it, it's unfortunate, but that's, 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 what, that's how it's going. Well, you know, then, like I say, my question is, can't we work with PD, with the city manager to put temporary can can cameras up? I mean, it's an ongoing thing at one park. We, we could certainly look and do a, a temporary camera at, at the park and or uh, expediting the purchase of those surveillance cameras that were previously approved by the council. So, um, point well taken, and we'll look into cameras at Ochoa Park. Thank you. I have a quick question, Sam, about the same item. Do we have appropriate lighting there at the moment? Because I, I hear that it's kind of dark over there. Is that, is that the case? Uh, it is the case, yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's something that we need to talk about as well. Because, I mean, unless the, ga the cameras are, you know, night cameras, I think some more lighting might even help a little bit, too. All right. Thank you. You want to open it up to the public before I make a motion? Any members of the public? Make a comment on this item? Yeah, Gene Yakely series. I think I brought that particular item before. Uh, so the citizens will get an idea. What is the current, do we say, monthly vandalism cost or average for all the parks in the city? It's a ball figure. You want to use it? For the parks uh, right now, I'm showing $6,500, but that could be just for uh, graffiti. You know, as yeah. far as Vin, as far as the repairing equipment, that could be, it varies from equipment to equipment. Sometimes it's a couple hundred dollars, sometimes a couple thousand dollars. Wow. So it varies, yeah. So it is quite an expense every month. Yeah, not, not, none of this. I mean, equipment. it seems small, you know, on a different scale, but as far as the size of the city and the parks that we have, it's quite an expense in man hours and parts and, and repairs. Correct. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Mayor, if I might. Yes. Absolutely. We we actually did uh, take Mr. Eakley's recommendation and are including that number in the monthly report. So okay. uh, thank you to Mr. Eakley for that suggestion. All right. Sounds good. Any other members of the public have any comments on this item? What about Zoom? Do you have any raised hands? There is no one wishing to speak. Okay. Looking for a motion. Move to adopt item number five, general correspondence, public works monthly report, April 2022. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Casey. Yes. Councilmember Klein. Yes. Vice Mayor Saparo. Yes. Mayor Lopez. Yes. Motion passes 4 0. Item number nine, resolution number 202246. You know, I, I, I pulled this item for one reason is, you know, my first house I bought was in Moro Village. And it's been around since the 50s. Um, and you have five phases going. What I do is just want it for record. If you could please tell us when each phase is going to commence and when the rest of the neighborhoods will be uh, slated to uh, get funding and, and do that, if you could please. Yes, I could. I'll be more than happy to do that, uh, Council. Uh, for, phase, for phase one, uh, we just got the bids uh, uh, last couple of weeks ago, a week ago. And uh, so that's going to be uh, under construction starting July, uh, hopefully July, and then it will be uh, 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 most likely by September, late September, we, we could have that wrapped up for phase two. Uh, 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 the funding would be in to, uh, to finish that uh, design. Uh, we're looking into 2023. And for phase three, it'll be 2024. Mid, um, this this would be like midsummer of 2023 and 2024. Uh, for phase three, for phase four, it'll be uh, the midsummer of 2025, and for phase five, would be midsummer of 2026. Thank you. And one thing I do want to note is phase one is on Garrison. Okay. Uh, correct. Yes. Okay. And the way it looks, I know we ran into this. A few years back, you know, this is slated to start when school is out and be completed before school starts. That, that's the plan, yes, sir. Okay. So even though you say July of 2022, you know, school is going to be out in two weeks, yeah. two weeks. If there's any way we can get that pushed up a little bit yeah. or talk to the district about when summer, summer school, if they're going to have summer school at Carroll Fowler and, and you know, try to get that the ball rolling as soon as possible so it'd be completed yes absolutely once we have the resolution passed uh we're going to go ahead and uh conduct a pre-construction meeting and get the uh, contractor on board quickly yes, and sir. and the property owners on long garrison know this is coming absolutely yes we've been in touch with them we gave them all notices yes they're they're uh they're on board thank you you're welcome thank you, Councilmember. any members of the public would like to comment on this item Anyone? Has their hands raised on Zoom? There is no one on Zoom. Looking for a motion. Okay, you move to adopt resolution 2022-46. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Casey. Yes. Councilmember Klein. Yes. Vice Mayor Silvera. Yes. Mayor Lopez. Yes. Motion passes 4-0. Thank you. Moving on to unfinished business. Item number 14. Resolution number 2022-37. Approving an appointment agreement with Alex uh, Terraza for the position of city manor manager. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, after a thorough search, you decided to choose interim city manager Alex Terraza as your new city manager. Uh, you then conducted the contract negotiations. Excuse me. <clears throat> Those were completed, and that agreement is attached uh, to the resolution uh, of approval. Uh, as a city clerk can attest, that I've had some trouble with document conversion, so there is one item that needs to be deleted and that is paragraph three on the top of page six and then there was a uh, on page nine the cell phone section remained highlighted that that didn't come off so that also i just note that so with those two uh corrections uh present the item for your consideration Okay, um, let's go ahead and open this up to the public first. Any members of the public have any comments on this item?
uniquely serious because there's a lot of people that don't attend meetings and probably quite a few that don't uh, listen to the Zoom. Maybe someone would tell them what's going on each council meeting. But I think there was a question that was brought up at the last meeting or the one before that about, uh, and I don't know if you want to give this information out to the general public, uh, what the salary is going to be for the new city manager and about the life insurance cost and uh, the request for or something to do with the transportation costs from, uh, I believe, Las Banas to Ceres each day. Uh, it'd be nice if uh, you could answer those and uh, let those and the people that might be listening be informed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the public have any questions? John Warren, City of Ceres. The only question I have, and <clears throat> I overlooked it, couldn't find it when I went through the staff notes that were available online, was the, uh, the item regarding the uh, $300 per month to provide transportation for the city manager to drive back and forth to work with the residents in the city of Los Banos. Um, I don't know if that was left in the contract or if that's still in the Mr. City Attorney. Would you like me to address those? Yes, Mr. Uh, first of all, the uh, salary is a $210,000. The life insurance, yeah, I don't know the cost of the premium. It is a $150,000 policy, which is kind of a standard uh, uh, item that's included in these contracts. The automobile allowance, uh, I was advised the $300 he receives is the same option that the department heads also have in lieu of using a city car. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Mr. Yakely, did you get your answers? Okay. Go ahead and repeat the other. How many questions did you come? Go ahead and step up. My apologies. I thought he had remembered what you had said. What was the other questions that you had? The paying for a, a life insurance policy wasn't that on there? Yes, as I said, it's a uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollar policy. I don't know. I think you asked what the premium was. I don't know what that is, but I know this is a standard uh, item included so in most of these documents. Everyone in the city that has a high position. It's their life insurance paid for? No, I'm talking about city managers. Only yeah. city managers? It's it's just a general rule, not every in every case. I mean, in, in the city. last administration, were all city managers, I mean, you were at several of them. Yeah, I believe this is a standard term in each of the last three contracts. So the last, since uh, Mayor Veer, or, or since you started with the city, all yes. of them have had their paid life insurance. I believe that's correct, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other members in the public? No questions? Any members on Zoom? There is no one on Zoom. Okay, do we receive any emails on this item? There was no written comments either. I'll bring this back to the council. Questions from the council? Well, I, I do have a question. I, you know, when we, when we went over this, this originally uh, a month or so ago, um, I kept my copy. Um, section D, vacation, vacation compensation, you know, getting 7.69 hours per pay period, uh, which would equate to about 15 hours per month. Now, now all of a sudden there's an initial bank of 80 hours, which was not in the original uh, contract that we had, we had looked at. And there was no discussion of that when the council had closed session of a bank of 80 hours, so I would like that removed. Mr. Mayor, uh, I may. Hold on one second. So, I, so if he's requesting for the item to be removed, is that still considered well, you, getting here, or do, or do we have to bring You can seat? discuss individual terms among yourselves. That I want to make sure. Okay. You can certainly do that, or can Alex allow to respond to that? Absolutely, to, yes. He's okay with that. And, and let me, 
Well, why, don't, yes, go ahead. Well, why don't I give you some background on it, as I recall. Uh, prepared a draft, we looked at it, wanted to add those banks, prepared a draft that included the other changes, but we didn't see that that wasn't on that last one. So then I sent an email to you saying, here's the contract from the last time with the additional uh, banks of benefits. So there was, there was an email that came out on that? I believe that's correct, yes. Do you, remember, do you remember that, Mike? No? I can see if I can pull it up. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, the first time it, it, it didn't pass is because the contract was drawn up somehow without a meeting before all of us. Uh, there was an understanding that it was approved and then we had a closed session and we discussed certain things and we agreed on certain things. But now this contract has different things in that. So it goes back to, you know, why, why have the council look into things? I don't, I don't know how, how better to explain that. So it, it's, it's a shame that it's drawn out so long, but that the first time it was brought up a couple, what, three sessions ago, we hadn't had a chance to see it before this, this session. And then we, we agreed that uh, Councilman Klein and I could talk to the attorney, and then we had a closed session to discuss things, and we agreed on certain things. And then this contract has little, it, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me, that's all. All right, council member, you got, you got that email? Is it looking? Alex, do you have, do you have any comments? Uh, other than this terribly awkward, uh, my only comment is, I, I wasn't privy to the closed session conversation Correct. So when I receive the agreement and the staff report, I assume what's in it has been reviewed by you, the council. Mm -hmm. So that's my only comment. Okay, that's fair. Um, council, any other comments? Well, I do have a comment. So, you know, with, you know, with what the city manager just said, we had our closed session. We gave direction to the city attorney, then if I'm listening to it correctly, then he's not a privy to what we did in closed session. So I'm lost because the job was the city attorney to go to the city manager and discuss what we we decided and what we discussed in closed session. But am I reading that wrong? Well, my, my assumption is what, what appeared in the appointment agreement uh, was, was agreed upon by the city council. So when I get the agreement, I read it, I, maybe I assumed incorrectly that that was reviewed and approved by you as the council. Okay, and, and it was, but the agreement that we, we discussed in closed session did not have the eight hour, 80 hours of bank, of bank vacation. You know, he's getting his compensation for, you know, uh, hours worked and over, you know, what do they call it, management leave and things like that. Which, which is what they're entitled to because, you know, they do put on long hours, you know, but everything else in here was standard and except for the eight hours. So my question to you is, Mr. Attorney, where'd the 80 hours come from when it wasn't in the original contract, which I have right here? Mr. Tarazas asked that to be added. And then I sent on May 6th, the mayor and council to attach, please find a copy of the latest proposed contract for Alex. I changed the effective date and added two banks of time for six leave and vacation, which were not included in the prior version. Well, I have to go back to my email because I, 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 I either didn't read it, missed it. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say you didn't do it. So. Yeah, I just want to make sure that everyone was doing their job correctly. So you did see that email. I mean, you sent it as you're saying, as you're stating. Okay. So I guess the next question is what, what, how do we want to proceed? Do we want to just discuss this here on the dais or? So my, here's, here's my question. Okay. I, I don't know if it's appropriate, but did you read the email? Did you read, you know, did each one of us read the email? Am I the only one that missed it? 
If I miss the email, then shame on me. You know, if I miss reading the email from the, the city attorney that, that, that says it's in here, then it's shame on me. That's the way I, that's the, that's the way I look at it. Right. I just, want, I just want to be fair to you, Mike. If, if we oh, I, I, what's fair to me is if I miss the email, then it's shame on me. Yeah. I must have missed it, too. If I'm being honest, if, if I did read it and if I, if I told you I don't remember, then well, I wouldn't be sitting here being honest. I, I don't remember seeing the email. My only comment is I'm ready to make a ma motion adopt this resolution mike i mean like i said i understand that council uh vice mayor um i just want to make sure mike that you're okay with if you did miss the email you know it, it goes i want to be it, fair to you it goes member. back to and i'm sorry to interrupt you mayor no, but fine. it goes back to you know really what the will of the council is it's not just one individual oh, absolutely i just like you know said, i mean so uh you know yeah and i understand i just want to make sure that you understand where i'm coming from i'll be respectful to you as well all right, so um, do we have any other questions? Move to approve resolution 2022-37, approving employment agreement with Alec Trazes for the position of city manager. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Casey. No. Councilmember Klein. Yes. Vice Mayor Silvera. Yes. Mayor Lopez. Yes. Motion passes 3-1. Thank you. Alex, welcome. Been here for six months, but welcome for, to the official position as city manager. We'll now move on. Thank you, oh, thank you, you Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor and Council. I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number 15, public hearing, to consider an appeal of the Planning Commission's decision to approval of the conditional use permit entitlement to allow an existing snow cone iced coffee business to operate on a year round basis without a drive through operation at 2000 Central Avenue. The City Planning Commission considered this proposal at their April 18th, 2022 meeting and approved the conditional use permit request without a drive through operation by 5 0 vote. Christopher, I believe you have a staff report too. You? Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll have James Michael, senior planner, um, uh, present, and I've got uh, uh, screen to share here. Go ahead, James. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Holm. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, all right. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Council. Um, James Michaels again with the Planning Division. Um, so what we're seeing here on the screen um, uh, is <clears throat> 2000 uh, Central Avenue. Um, the applicant Heaven Snow is a business located here. Um, it's near the La Sequoia, uh, Sequoia Supermarket, and it it's been operating for six months out of each year, from April through October, as a shaped ice stand, selling ice cold treats to its customers, and has been operating from from the site since 2007 through the city's administrative uh, permit process. In September of 2021, the applicant met with staff to discuss the possibility of operating on a year-round basis and requested a six-month extension of their administrative permit to allow them to operate during the fall and winter season from October 2021 through April of this year. Uh, and they wanted to do that to see if there would be enough demand where the applicant would want to remain open on a year-round basis. And so staff granted that extension. In mid-February of this year, uh, the applicant um, also informed staff that, uh, that they believed that there was a high enough demand for their business to remain open year round, but that uh, they would like to explore the possibility of incorporating a drive-through as part of their operation. Now, as the commercial zoning allows for drive-through restaurant uses subject to approval of a conditional use permit, staff determined the applicant's proposal is consistent with the drive-through uh, restaurant use and may request approval of such permit. And so the applicant proceeded with the application in March. And again, the Planning Commission considered the request at their April 18th, 2022 meeting. Now at that meeting, uh, staff highlighted uh, that the applicant desires to incorporate a drive-through uh, to allow for greater flexibility to their customers when ordering. Uh, it was discussed that the administrative permits that were approved in previous years did not allow the drive-through 
uh, due to the concerns that the drive through would potentially obstruct both on site traffic flow with the parking area that serves the customers of the nearby La Secura supermarket grocery store, as well as the off site traffic flow with vehicles queuing on the Central Avenue roadway. To address the, con these concerns um, about traffic conflicts, uh, the <laughs> proposed drive through, uh, the applicant um, was proposing that the side parking lot window on the east end of their, uh, their ice stand would only be utilized for taking orders and payment and incorporating a directional sign on the building that indicates that no more than two vehicles uh, would be allowed at, at a time in the drive through And so as may be needed, the employees would then direct all other customers to the grocery store parking area so that the Central Avenue entrance remains unobstructed. Uh, upon a completion of staff presentation to the commission, uh, the commission voiced their concerns about allowing the drive through as part of the operation. Uh, they indicated that allowing the drive through creates difficulty for vehicles being able to maneuver safely in and out of the site, and that the potential of vehicles queuing up onto Central Avenue will create a public safety issue. Um, and so, uh, with no further discussion uh, taking place at that time, uh, by 5 0 vote, the Planning Commission approved the use permit to allow for the business to operate year round, but made one modification to condition of approval uh, B2. Uh, resolution PC 22-07 uh, to state that the business operation should not include a drive-through. Following the, uh, the Planning Commission meeting, an appeal was received uh, from the applicant um, on April 28th, uh, again of this year, in regards to the Commission's decision to not allow the drive-through as part of the approved conditional use permit for the operation. And so what is being asked tonight um, is for the City Council to evaluate the Planning Commission's decision and either agree with prohibiting the drive-through or disagree and allow the drive-through. Um, regardless of whether the City Council decides to approve or deny the appeal, uh, it should be noted that the City still has the ability to revoke the use permit if the applicant does not comply with uh, the approved conditions. The applicant is aware that the City reserves the right to review the uh, use permit as need arises uh, determined from complaints received and that the city may impose new conditions or revoke the use permit at such plan commission review which would cause all um, all activities to cease uh, at that site now uh, if the city council elects to approve the appeal then can, uh, city council would make a motion to approve uh, cc resolution number 2022-43 alternative so that uh, concludes staff's presentation. Okay, I believe the applicant is here. If you could please state your name. Good afternoon, my name is Violet Savay. Oh, I am thank you. Dr. Irasaba's wife from Heaven Snow. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start with uh, council questions. Title. No questions right now. Okay. Do you, do you have a question first? We're on the we're on item number fifteen. The public hearing. So we're going to vote. Have a drive through. Have it year round or not. Yeah, but we have to open up the public hearing first and allow uh, the applicant to speak. But I was just wondering if you had any questions now. Absolutely. Okay, go ahead, Violet. First, I would like to tell everybody good evening. And before, and you, before you begin, I'm so sorry. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that the public hearing is now open. Go ahead, Violet. Good evening, everybody. And um, happy Monday, by the way. Happy Monday. <laughs> um, it, you know... Um, We've been in the city of Ceres for now 15 years. And um, I know that city of Ceres is a very conservative small town because um, we are from Turlock and this is our home away from home. I think I spend most of my life here than I do in Turlock. And it's been a pleasure. We have never had any issues, no problems, no accidents. Knock on wood and no complaints from our landlord that we have been bad tenants. 
We have established great relationship with our students. We've employed lots of uh, within this community, and we've built friendship with a lot of people here in the city of Ceres. And we also bring a lot of people from out of town to this town. However, it is a little unfortunate that today we have to come here and discuss something that's really, I, I don't want to say nothing because it is something to us. Safety is a priority to us and our business. We carry a full coverage. We are always um, making sure that there's nothing going on in that parking lot, whether it's our business or after school. Um, anything going on in that parking lot, regardless if it has to do with our business or without our business. So safety is our priority. Today, I'm not here to ask for a drive-through to where we're going to be lining up cars after cars and making it complex for Central Avenue because I already know, number one, there's crazy drivers on that street. Number two, there's already traffic. What we're here to ask is for you guys just to please reconsider that we can be able to only take minimum, maximum to two vehicles, order payment and have them park, and we will take the item to the customers. With this being said, I'd like to give two examples that have occurred within the last three weeks. Number one, we've had very angry customers that wanted to continuously keep calling the city and um, we told them that um, if they would like to do anything to go ahead and sign a paper with their name and phone numbers that not everybody has signed because we haven't had time to get everybody's signature. And we also didn't want to make this a big ordeal on social media as well because I think we can kind of hash this out here within us. We are just asking that if we can just take the payments orders and have them park and we will go ahead and take the items out to customers due to the fact that we have handicapped customers they can't get out of vehicles number two we also have veterans we also have elderly people who are um doing chemotherapy and they want ice, something ice and they want to come and i just made a gentleman the other day actually get out of his vehicle not realizing that he just finished chemo and he was a veteran. It really made me um, break my heart. And I actually just handed it to him because I felt like it was such an inconvenience that he could have just given me his order, very simple, his payment, and I could have taken it to him. I'm just here to ask if you can please reconsider that. If in the near future, there's a complaint or an accident or anything that, um, <clears throat> makes this any complex matter, which I know it hasn't been a complex matter. I know that someone um, took a picture in the winter from the opposite direction saying that we were blocking the driver, uh, the driveway, but that picture was not um, very um, a proven evidence, if I'm not mistaken, Christopher can kind of elaborate on that. And also it wasn't of the driving parking lot and um pretty much this is it we're just kind of asking and if you guys can please um at least give us a chance we've never had a problem and if a problem does reoccur or if it does occur at all as far as an accident or a actual complaint or a picture or whatsoever then you guys can be more than uh you know, entitled to go ahead and take that off the permit. But I just don't see a reason of some having something taken away from a small business that has absolutely hasn't had any problems as far as proven problems or accidents or fire or um, police coming out or anything. Um, like I said, we know what the liability is, and we try our best to address safety as our number one. And I do have phone numbers and names. I don't know if you'd like to take that, but yeah, we'll, we're willing to um, 
put a sign to where it's very noticeable that it will say no more than two vehicles, order and pay and park. Thank you. And I think pretty much people understand that concept. Um, I do also want to address, I think uh, I had a lady who called James. She said she had a handicapped son. She came to the window and they told her, we can't serve you through the window. You'd have to park. And she told her that, uh, my employee told her that, I'm sorry, this is something that has just recently changed. We can, we'd love to come out and, you know, help you. And she said, I need to go. My, I have a handicapped job that I have to get to another place. So this woman came back to me a week later and she explained to me that, listen, I just don't see why is the problem with a mom with a handicapped child. By law, you're not allowed to take my order and me pay you and you bring it out to me and have my child be able to have a treat and support your business. And I'm a citizen of series. So I think she actually gave James a call. I'm not sure how it went, but she was very disappointed. With that being said, I'm done. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Violet. If you can hand that over to her. Any other members of the public that would like to come up and speak? Mr. Yakely? Hi, Violet. She, no, we have some people that want to speak. And okay. Sorry. We'll get back to you. I just want to speak. I, I hope I can call you Violet. I want to speak about Violet. It has nothing to do with the city's decision. But listen to her in the past and tonight. I want to commend her on all she's done for her business and the right things she's done with insurance. And she's dotted all the T's and whatever has to be done. And she's a prime example of what we don't see in the city where people just ignore what you're supposed to do to be in business here, whether it's small uh, on the street or whatever. She's done what, what people should do. And I commend her for what she's done uh, to keep her business going and what have you. And uh, thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, uh, council members. I spoke at the uh, meeting in April when they had the planning commission review of this particular business. Could, Christopher, could you put the picture back up on the screen so folks here can see what I'm talking about of the parking lot there of the Sequoia Mart? We're talking about the way that people have to drive in and look at the project. If you look over on the store side, where if you stop at the uh, snow cone, and then you made kind of a little left, uh, pardon me, a little right, and parked in front of the store, there's two handicapped parking slots there uh, that most people can't use because they don't have the placard. And then there's like one or two other spots for parking in the direction that traffic would be moving. All the other parking slots are in the opposite direction. Um, and so there wouldn't be a, a spot for them to park unless they went, turned around and came back and parked uh, the proper way in those side angles. And as I discussed at the, uh, at the other meeting, we pointed out that these young people here have no training in how to direct traffic. You get two or three or four people that back up out on the street um, these young people would have to go out into the street, which wouldn't be a good thing, to tell the drivers, please move their cars and go park them someplace else, and there's really not any parking for them. Uh, and we all know how the general public treats people who direct traffic. I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to do it, but a couple people that were on the planning commission did comment to that fact that it, it's a difficult situation, and these young people should not be put in that predicament and they haven't had the proper training to direct traffic on the city street you have to have uh, training and you have to have the right equipment on and vests and things like that so that enters into the equation 
And when you look at this building, it's basically very portable. There's no place inside that building to wash your hands. And the electricity comes from a light pole out in the parking lot. And the electricity goes into that building with a, uh, with a uh, big tail power cord, uh, an extension cord, uh, like you would use on an RV or whatever, but only smaller. And so with the people serving the public in there not being able to wash their hands between customers, I know the health department has signed off and reviewed this, and they feel that the bathroom that's inside Sequoia Market is sufficient. And I don't see these young people running back and forth to that uh, facility to wash their hands in between customers. So there's some problems here. These folks want to run a full-time business uh, for the last 15 years, but they don't want to make an investment into a full-time business type of structure. There's going to be some new coffee houses coming to our city over in the Kmart uh, parking lot there, Dutch Brothers, I believe. And what they're gonna be required to do is a lot different than this. I mean, if they could just come into town and throw up a little shack, plug their uh, pigtail into the power pole right next door, I'm sure they would do that. But the uh, building folks and the uh, permit process would not allow that. So city council in the past has seen fit to allow these business people to operate here on a part-time basis, uh, April through October. and now the planning commission has changed that. They've changed what the city council already put in place. And I don't think that's proper either. I don't think that the planning commission should change things that have already been decided. So consider these things when you're making your decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to elaborate on that, please. Um, no disrespect, sir, but um, we are health department approved. We have three compartment sink and a hand wash sink in our unit. We have to have a restroom within 200 feet. We've accomplished all of that. We've done a $10,500 remodel upgrade to our unit three years ago. We also do safety to all of our employees during orientation, couples out a couple weeks after opening. And I believe um, we've done it all and we have a very, very good reputation with health departments and we accommodate everything they've asked us. We go by the books, we follow instructions. Had we not done that, we would have been shut down a long time ago. With that being said, um, we have all the necessities and up to code equipments and appliances inside that unit for the employees, including a sign that says employees must wash hands. Thank you. Anyone else? City Council, Pete Samagel, residents of Ceres, 33 years. I, I see what the young lady wants to do. If she has a profitable, uh, profitable business and, and, and she's in the compliance with city regulations, health regulations. The thing is here, as John was stating, is the traffic problem that we have on Central, especially when it's let out. I know school's only so many months a year. It, I don't know how feasible it would be. You have good relations with the owner moving to the north side of the Sequoia building and having uh, that whole entrance way so he can drive in and drive out and, and just eliminate that part of the parking lot to, to your uh, business. That, that would be my suggestion. And at the same time you're there, you, you, you get your fixed building and maybe you can run a new, a new line that, that is a leg legit line instead of using a plug-in to the building. Overhead, overhead line. Thank you. Thank you, Council. I'm sorry, one more thing. Things are a lot easier said than done. And we've taken a lot of things into consideration. The year-round permit 
has been given out in city of series to other food vendors and um, we're in we're also considered into that category as far as um, we know as of today also the school being in session um, we don't do no order whatsoever whether the city approves it or disapproves the taking order and paying and to park during school hours when they're out between two and four o'clock we we've restricted that window completely before any of this was even brought up I just wanted to also let the council know that we are on top of that as well um, however let's not forget our busy season is in the summer June July August which school session is not in and the traffic is not as bad from 2.30 to 3.30. So we've looked at it all. We also have um, legal advisors that we speak to as well for our own safety, for our own um, business establishment. Um, I hope that answers that question. And the parking, there's plenty of parking to the right. Um, that picture is very old. The parking lot has been repaired. It has been restriped parking slots. And we have not had a problem with customers parking in any of those slots, even on the side, because now there's parking on the right side of it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Violet. Any other comments? Zoom, do we have any hands raised? There is no one on Zoom wishing to speak. Did we receive any emails on this item? We did not receive any emails on this item. Okay. Uh, the public hearing is now closed. I will bring this item back to council. Questions from the council, please. Well, you know, as I look at this, you know, she's got to be, the business has got to be commended for, for being here. I know at one time that, you know, they were only operational uh, part-time during the year. Uh, now she's year round. Uh, there's really two issues I have with this whole thing is the business is located, you know, approximately 25 feet or to 25 yards at the most away from an entrance and exit. And as the traffic flow would be coming in, uh, would be uh, coming in off central heading north, uh, you know, the location with trying to regulate all that, uh, you know, with what I've done and, and, and my job and I've traveled, you know, I look at uh, whether it's an In-N-Out Burger, uh, Dutch Bros, uh, all these other things, you know, the intentions are always good. And then all of a sudden, it just becomes a nightmare. Uh, you look at uh, some of the facilities they have, you know, in Monte Vista Crossing uh, and what they've done to uh, the In-N-Out Burger and how they've had to, you know, uh, realign the traffic flow and, and take orders outside. And, you know, and they're not even right there at an entrance and an exit. So, you know, with, with that being said, you know, the only thing I can support is uh, agreeing with the Planning Commission's ruling and denying the appeal. Council members, any questions? I have just question. The seating capacity at a normal facility that's enclosed, there's a limit to it. Uh, since they don't have that, it, it, could they, you know, I drive by it every day and I know that they have happy customers, uh, but there's some sort of limit to how many could end up in there? Is that an appropriate question? I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I agree with Council Member Klein. And just the way it's currently configured and where your business is located, I, I just, it's just not a safe option to have a drive through. Um, it does go against the flow of traffic, the way the parking lot's designed. And to, to ask people to limit the amount of cars in line is, is I believe, unrealistic also. So I would have to support the Planning Commission decision um, on the drive through as well. I, I have a, I should have asked earlier. I have a question for you, but please. 
within the last several weeks, you have not allowed any drive throughs No. Did you ever attempt to allow two people at a time? Have you been doing that this whole time? Um, I'm going to have to be honest with you. There was an older woman, and she was kind of shaking, and she has an oxy oxygen tank. And we told her that if she can park, I'll have one of the employees go out there and take her order. Well, my question was, have, um, you, have you actually had only two people at a time? Have you tried that before yourself? I guess my question. Well, when the COVID was going on, um, yes, we did, because people didn't want to be close to one another, and they just wanted to grab and go. Like I said, we've never had a problem. We've never had a problem. So you've never had a line? We've no. never had a line. We have never had a line just line up out there. We're not Dutch bros. We're not in and out. I've seen those um, drive throughs I get it. We're not them. We're just a small business trying to make ends meet. This is all we're asking you guys is can we just please give it a, a try? We've been doing it for the last couple of years since COVID hit. We've never had an accident. We've never had a complaint. You know, I just feel like we can work together on this, you know, just give us a chance. And if it doesn't go well, we understand. You can revoke that anytime. But why shut something down? Why shut a small business down? You know, it's just not right. Well, my, I guess my, my question is to the council. Would would you be open to the idea of monitoring within like the next 90 days, just a two, a two cars going in that drive through? And if it doesn't work out, and I don't know what we, I don't know what it would probably involve staff or if we figure out a way, but at least to actually physically see if that's going to work instead of just saying, no, it's not going to work without truly knowing. Can I say something? We're not going to get any rich off of this and we're not going to become millionaires. I'm only here to serve these customers because this has been my passion. And knowing that a child was handicapped and he couldn't get something two weeks ago, it really broke my heart. And the mom wanted to come in today, but she couldn't because he had to go for a treatment and seeing the gentleman who was a veteran coming from chemo, 80 years old. I mean, accidents can happen any way we look at it, right? He could have crossed over and walked to my stand and gotten hit by a car. But, you know, I think with God, all things are possible. That's it. Council, I would only approve this if we had a limit of two vehicles. You know, Mayor, I, I you know, <clears throat> I could re reconsider it if the building was not in the entrance and exit with that proximity and the flow of traffic. With the flow of traffic, the way it is, the entrance and exit, uh, no, I, I, I could not support a temporary monitor for 90 days or 180 days or even 30 days, you know, uh, that, that is, that is the caveat is the entrance and exit where it's located and the flow of traffic, you know, uh, so, uh, no, I, I could not. I, I understand where you're coming from council member. And I concur as, as it's currently sits, the business sits, it's, it'd be irresponsible to approve a drive through my opinion. Yeah. Casey, any other questions? I agree with my other fellow council members. It doesn't work that close entry, you know. We already have a problem on Mitchell and Whitmore at the car wash Sunday afternoon. And there's a lot more cars, but it just doesn't work. You're suggesting two cars, but two cars you're already blocked in the driveway. It doesn't work. Thank you, council member. Okay. So, Mr. Michaels, I did not write them down, but you have a resolution number 2022 TBA uh, 
denying the appeal, can you give me the resolutions number? So if the council desires to uphold um, the commission's decision, um, then it'd be attachment to CC resolution 2022-43. That's attachment to a new staff report. So that would be that would be to uphold the planning commission's ruling. That is correct. Okay. And, and councilman, it's number fifty-four. Pardon? Number fifty-four. Fifty-four? Yes. I put fifth forty-three. I'm glad you were correcting me. So fifty-four oh. upholds it, correct? That'd be correct. Okay. I move to adopt resolution twenty twenty-two fifty-four. Uh Upholding the planning condition, uh, planning commissioner's uh, findings on the drive through. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Casey. Yes. Councilmember Klein. Yes. Vice Mayor Silvera. Yes. Mayor Lopez. No. Motion passes three. Moving on to new business, item number 16. Resolution number 2022-52, approving the use of ARPA funds to purchase banners for the active military veterans banner program and designating 4th and 3rd Street and North Street as the inaugural installation corridor. Chavez. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and council members. Um, first of all, I, I wanna thank the committee that's sitting behind me. Um, also, Mr. Casey, council member, and then we have staff member, Anthony Sims, and the total of five meetings. Um, let me just say this, these guys were dedicated. They, they already knew what location where they wanted. We brought up Hatch, talked about Hatch, there were six poles on Hatch and talked about it. They said, we're not, we're not going, we're not going that way. Um, they wanted everything down 4th Street. That was the main corridor. Talked about, um, we're coming straight off of, um, 4th Street all the way down to North Street. Then we said, no, the seasonal banners there, the trees kind of overhang, can't really see the banners. But we talked about, you know, 4th Street, the community center's at, and then going from North Street to 1st uh, Street, and then on 3rd um, for the total of 37 banners. That decision came really quick. That decision, I think that was made like probably the first meeting and the second meeting, we stick to that. Uh, Mr. Warren, our committee member, um, got me in contact with the city of Turlock. Her name was Amber Traney. She gave us a presentation how they do their banner program. After seeing that, it was kind of, well, this is, we can do this. It was pretty, she gave us a good, a good presentation where we understood what we're looking for and what we can do. Um, I jumped right away looking for quotes. We'll, we'll go to that process. Just letting you know with the city of Turlock, how they do theirs, it, it was, it, it kind of made it sense, more sense for us and, and got a more understanding how they did this program. So it was, I think I commend to her, given their, her support in that presentation really, I think got our committee wrapped around. But I think after that presentation, we kind of, we, they knew what we were. So it was always about location and funding. Where's the funding going? Those, those are our main topics. Um, next slide, please. So this is a sample of what Turlock does. Um, they have in their corridor is on Folk Perth. Um, I think Countryside Lane, they have a total of 27 banners. It's filled every year. This year was the only year they only filled 22. They go, they hang them from November, the week of veterans, and then they take them down the week before the, the following year of veterans, so they stay for one year. I don't know if any of you guys have driven down um, Countryside Lane. It's, it's really nice. These banners are, are six-foot banners. Our banners would be like three by fives because our poles are smaller on the black. Next slide, please. So the guidelines, the guidelines or the honorees must be active serving in the United States military. And that means active and um, active reserve included. 
but there we have a total of 126 active in the in the city of Ceres, our surroundings, and 22 that are in the reserves. Service member, service members or applicant must must be qualified as a resident. Serving members, um, qualified residents. If if the applicant is qualified, residents and service members must immediately family, spouse, child, parent, grandchild, and sibling. So this is one of the one of the um, discussions that came up from one of our from council member Casey, qualifying residents. So we were talking about zip codes here. So he said, let's let's follow the the city school district zip codes in the surrounding areas because there's little pockets. Um, so those, so I call the school districts. So the zip codes that we'll be looking into are area <coughs> codes um, 95307, 95351, and 95358. We'll be looking at when we see those applications. Next slide, please. Well, here here is the the locations um, of the polls. There's a total of 37. Um, this was really decided, I, like I said, like week, week one, week two after our meetings. Um, and it made more sense because we do have the memorial at Whitmore Park. So right now, and then the reason why too is we have the season banner on 4th Street all the way up to North Street. Kind of didn't want to lose that attraction there um, to keep those banners up. And we have our own flow of banners going for our military. And like I said, we have a hundred. 123 active, 22 reserved. Next slide, please. Application um, process. So this is going to be, like I said, year round. So we we'll, we'll, we we are suggesting that we have the banners up put up before November 11th, and taken down that week prior. So they'll stay up for one year. At the time of the applicant submission, applicant applications, proof of residency, and proof of service. Prior to the banner design, we'll have official provided, you know, with their service picture, and if payment, a payment if no sponsorship has been secured. Um, banner design, it will be approval <coughs> of, of the family members and us to make sure the names are correct. See it, so that, that's one of the things we've learned is that make sure the family members know this is the right, this is the right spelling, and, and the committee will um, go through that process too. Next slide, please. And here's the application. Um, this is similar what um, Turlock did. I know we, we did a little tweaking, added some stuff. A lot of the community members um, sent me emails after the meeting we had about this application process. It's pretty much we agreed on it, they seen it, they approved it. We met a few times on this, and I think we got it all dialed in um, how we're gonna do this. Um, with the application process, when they do turn in their paperwork, it won't just be me that approves this. Our committee members have decided that we will all come together and make sure that is, um, it is the active member or a veteran. So they, they, will have, they will be in the process, it just will, wouldn't be me. So they will look at it because I do have majority of them are veterans. They know what um, the information we need. Next slide, please. So after after the one year term that the banners are up, the banner um, retirement it will come to the council where we take them down. We'll um, wrap the banners, put a, a gold bowl. Um, gold ribbon around the banner, have family attend council, and council members will present the banners to the family. So with the banners, with the, with the banners, if, if they want to renew it every year, they can renew it every year. It's going to be a first, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be an ongoing process for this. So if they want to do it the following year, and they and we have the funding that they pay for it, then we'll stay up. So there so once the year the year is up, say in November, the week of November twenty second, week of November tenth, 
we only we have 37 polls with we only have 22 that have that we have applications that hang up those are the 22 we will, we will put on if there's one that comes in after that time we will not put it on because we want to honor those veterans for the whole time and they will go on the next cycle and, and that's kind of what Turlock does they don't see a problem with us having all 37 banners put up. Next slide, please. So we do have like a, a sponsor program. Um, this is kind of the idea that we, we took from um, the city of Turlock. We are requesting funds for the ARPA fundings and that's that will come out from the approved received. There was $20,000 banners for downtown we were requesting seven thousand dollars for this first round of funds the banner program and then after that the next round of ARPA funding we would probably request another round then in the meantime I would like to probably meet with service groups rotary lions different community members to ask for sponsorships I, I don't think it'll be a problem getting sponsors active um, community that we have here I think we'll, we're all, we'll be in good hands program next slide please the company that um, that will provide this service is all-star trophies and they're located in Turlock been to the site talked to them got a quote already for for the banners and it's a total of six thousand three hundred and sixty six dollars um, for one banner, it's 158.40, but with tax and all that, it comes out to 172.06 for the banner. They would, you know, we our process will be we'll start the process in September. Um, I mean, not but we ended in September. But once this is approved, we can get this pushed out, start tomorrow, and have applications ready uh, to approve by September. We can get everything lined up and get the uh, information to the printing company and have them ready for quite a week of print. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. For the sponsorship program, it says here that the program is not for individual applicants, it's for the entire program. So, as, you, as members of the public or anyone starts donating to the program, this fund will be used until we have no more funds is that correct yes even if even if for example if there's a, someone who specifically wants to sponsor a particular banner the other other members of the public who donated whether it's one dollar 225 will go to somebody a family in need who may not be able to afford it right? yes mm -hmm. okay that makes sense i like that and does do the ban are the banners double-sided no um no they're not double-sided i have to confirm on that i believe Yes, they will be. They should be. Okay. Yes. Do the are the sponsorships are the are the, the those who sponsor, being that it's a, a program wide um, sponsorship, their information is on the website, not on the banner. No, no, it won't be on the on the banner, but it will be advertised on our Facebook page, mm -hmm. our website, and then also the city's website. City's website, the page. Okay. Thank you. Question. How much is a banner going to cost a family to have a banner put up? So the, for a cost of one banner, it's 158.40, but with tax, it will come out to 172.06 for the banner. But that's for the hardware, so that should be the only for the first in, time. Yeah, that's yeah. So that's. So then including. after the first time, then how much will a banner cost a family to put up? It will be still the same cost. Are they taking the hardware with them? No. No. Make sense that, of that for me, please. If we don't have to buy the the oh. uh, hardware every time. Why oh, would that's we? That's right. I I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I didn't I didn't look into. I can I can follow up with that. Get that yeah, because the hardware we shouldn't have the to hardware, replace it. Yeah, the hardware should be able to stay there. I just have a comment. I'm disappointed to see the committee go away from Hatch and Mitchell. I think with the thousands and thousands of cars that travel those streets every single day, it would have been more appropriate, and that was intention when we started all this i was involved with it okay. well i have a follow-up question on that when i did start this when i did bring this to the council that was the original thought hatch road 
Um, and then the committee recognized that there's some need for a downtown series, which I think is awesome. I'll be honest with you guys. Thank you for that. Um, is there a, is there any way that we could also do Hatch Road? Do we have, will we be able to have enough applicants? Say for example, the first year you fill up all downtown and then we also can try to go for Hatch Road and then maybe next Mitchell Road. I mean, so, this program so could was, potentially we, expand. Yes, Mayor, we and, and Council Member Severa, we did have that discussion. Say if we did fill all 37 of those banners, it would go to Hatch. Okay. Yeah, so that discussion did. did so it's not completely off the table. No, it's not just, completely just off the a, table. everyone's recommendation. Everybody's recommendations downtown location, but if we did fill them, it would lean towards Hatch. I mean, I do agree with you, Vice Mayor, that, that the original plan was Hatch Road. It was Hatch and Mitchell, if we had enough. Hatch and, and Mitchell. Mr. Yakely could uh, attest to that. He was, it was his, like, this whole thing was Mr. Yakely's idea when we were getting ready to name Toe Park. This is where this started. Um, back to the cost. 170 something dollars a piece initially for all of the 37 or however many banners we want to put up. Where is the cost to the family coming into that? If, if you're asking for ARPA funds to cover all of those costs, then where are the costs to the family coming from? Because I know in Turlock, I have a friend that's son's been up there for two years. They pay for it every year. So, yeah, so if they, you're, the ARPA funds that you're asking for pays for all of it for the first 37 where where's the where are the funds from the families that are going to pay to have theirs that's where we go from. and ask for sponsorships from service clubs and then family members if we don't have that spot and family members want it they will pay for that for that banner to be up i think you're missing my question you're asking for enough money to cover arpa money to cover all of it for the yes. first time mm -hmm. and where are the fees that those families are going to pay you said you have 22 right now where are those fees going if we're going to cover the entire cost of of the initial 37 banners where's the money going to that the citizens are paying to have a banner up there why would you ask for for our funds to cover all of the costs and then also charge the families well no that we're going to charge sense. the families the first round if we receive the arpa it won't be charged this is just a breakdown after the year if we don't have funding that's when we're going to ask for them we're going to ask for sponsorships, and if we don't have the sponsorship, they would pay for the banner. Just for the first year, we're asking. Whoever who decides to do it first, it's it's, it's a freebie for them, in. and then after that, everybody also will have to pay. Yes, they will. But if I remember, uh, Joey, when the lady from Series from Sherlock made the presentation, and I understood her to say that members never had to pay anything because the service club private individuals came forth and, and they yeah the spot the sponsors so there was that's what i understood. yeah i mean i once it takes off it, it kind of it, it kind of takes off that's what she said people will support the veteran program so they, we believe that the sponsorships will have enough sponsor really roll roll over for But I, like council member Severa said, there is a few of them that pay for their services to be. Yeah, on. the friend I know that paid twice. Yeah, yeah, twice. So I don't know if there wasn't enough sponsorship money or there wasn't some money from the city's budget towards it, but they paid twice. I know last year, I mean, for this year, their numbers were down from 27 all the way down to 22. So say, for example, if an applicant applied, are you going to let the applicant know that there's funds available that they could either apply to or yes would you this for this for this first round you yes. wouldn't encourage them to pay for it you would yes. most you would try to use the money that's available from either the arpa funds and the funding from all the sponsorships for the that first would be the goal for the first year yes with arpa funding okay and that and that's similar to what's happening in turlock yes and obviously it, it's been working except for that the fact that you said that the numbers have been lower yes So I'm following what council member Severa is saying. We're setting precedents right here with paying for the first for the first leg of this. Okay. Um, I commend the committee. They've done everything that was asked of them. 
to get this thing moving forward. Uh, and I, I think it's long overdue. Mr. Yeagley, thank you very much for bringing this up. And, you know, it is long time overdue. Uh, my thing is, is can't we have, and I'm just asking, the committee or uh, some other means of doing something to get future sponsorship uh, so it the families don't have to pay for it. So it's not a, one of those things where we can do that. I know that, you know, being on the planning commission years ago, they have, uh, they replace those banners every couple of years. They have money from their downtown redevelopment, you know, monies that go towards the boundary, uh, the, uh, uh, banners that, you know, uh, we need to do something so it's no cost to the families. So with this first year right now, you know, we have a year into to looking at doing something because we have an, a, a lot of wonderful business around here, whether it's Ace Hardware, a bank, you know, grocery store, uh, or all these that, you know, once a year would probably be more than willing to give a $150 donation. And I know we can set up an account in the accounting. It would go just for banner, banner purchasing, you know, that that's where it go. But I think, you know, that's something we, we probably need to look at. So the, uh, no family has to pay for it. And, that, and that's our goal, Council Member Klein, mm -hmm. that, that's our goal. Yeah, I know, but, correct. But he was saying that if they don't get a sponsorship, the families would have to do it. What I'm saying is, you know, he, if they don't have a sponsorship, and families would have to pay for it. I'm trying to alleviate that equation completely by just getting sponsorships and we can put money into an account that would be for banners only. And that's our goal. That's our goal okay. as a committee. And so, then also I did, uh, yeah. you mentioned with uh, Director of Finance, Letitia, I did ask her if we can, once it's approved, have an account number there and that money would go in there if this roll over every year. I, I just, back, so. I just don't want it to be said that, you know, that a family would be obligated, you know, to pay for it if we don't have a sponsorship, because that would sort of detour a couple of people away. Agreed. You know, I, I think that, you know, we need to try to, we have one year to establish some kind of account, you know, to get that thing going. So we don't, we don't have that, that one or two individuals that feel like, man, I, I just can't do that right now. And that's going to be one of my my goals for myself and the committee that would make sure we go into sponsorships and advertising that. So I would, you know. Well, I, I have a recommendation. If we do have the banners starting a downtown series, we should probably have a banner up there, not up there, but uh, at the street, on the street level that says sponsor this program. One way of trying to advertise for the future, because if we don't do it, if we don't do any advertisement, we're just, it's just going to be word of mouth. I mean, that does work, but we not, you need also probably invest in marketing this banner program, whether it's on the radio, whether it's on social media, or you know, the way we always advertise a lot of our events, um, whether it's downtown series, whether it's on the entrance coming in from Hatch Road, or any other way. But alluding to what you're saying, I think it's it's very important that we make sure that this is zero cost to to our veterans and their families because they've they've done a lot for our country and. If this is a small gesture, I'm willing to do it. Well, and we also have an economical development director that is going around his building the businesses that he can hand out one of these flyers to. <laughs> You're you on the right track. I'll, right <laughs> I'll put him right on the spot because he, he's Tell the me. one that's going around to these businesses and talking to them and welcoming them and, yeah, and working different. with the chamber. I mean, we can and, just include that whole package in there. Mr. Sims was a part of our committee, but I invite, awesome. invited him to sit on our board because I know he's working downtown. It's great. He's very eager. So, like I said, I don't think we're going to have a problem finding funding after year one. I like it. <clears throat> All right. Any more questions for the council? Okay, now open it to the public. I just want to make sure I was trying to remember whether I opened it or not. Members of the public, please step up. I'm sure that everybody on the committee would love to speak. Step up, please. Gene Aguilar, 
thing, uh, Mike Klein said it, it was a long time coming. Uh, it should have happened a long time ago, way before the park issue. I want to commend uh, uh, Joey Chavez. He does a great job. When he gets into something, he goes all the way. And he's informed us all the time on what's happening. He's called us, some of us. And uh, uh, he's making this thing happen, whereas we could have went in the past and I don't think that I could discount this, but uh, I think that it wouldn't have moved along as fast as it has. And these people behind me have participated yeah, with their decisions and, and uh, uh, ideas. And I think when this thing goes off, I hope that it does get funded so we don't have to worry about families having to pay for something because I know this is a burden on a lot of people. And that being a burden uh, for a family that has a loved one that's in the military, if you've ever been in the military, it's uh, kind of like being in a, a service uh, uh, department in a city. They're all united. They're brothers. They're teammates. And uh, uh, being that as a, a son, a daughter, a father, mother, uncle, whoever, when you're in the military, whether it's peacetime or you're in a war zone, there's no comparison. And to have some respect, from, and, and that's a magic word we don't see all the time or hear, and we need that in series. There's a lack of respect in the city for our fellow man, woman, whoever. But we lack that. And by putting that up there, I hope that we gain some respect for our community and the people that live here, and especially our veterans that gave so much for our country. Thank you. Next person. John Warren, City of Series. I want to uh, thank the council for allowing me to serve on this committee. Uh, Mr. Chavez here has done an excellent job in guiding us and keeping track of everything uh, with the minutes and stuff. We've had a lot of the conversation that you folks have just had in involving the uh, financing of this project going forward so the families don't have to pay that later. Eventually it might be $200 because as time goes by, things get more expensive. And so the city of Turlock in, uh, in her presentation to us um, fully explained that their program is fully funded. There hasn't been any one family that has had to pay to have the bank their loved one displayed in the city. So that gives us a lot of insight that there are members of our community that will step forward and donate, whether it's a private citizen. Uh, she even said some of the council members down there, uh, when it was necessary, uh, pitched in and made sure that the banner fund money was, was available. So we picked this particular location, 4th Street and North Street, down around the park, because in the very near future, we're gonna have that ACE train coming here and there's gonna be a lot more people that are gonna be coming in and out of that area that will visually see these, uh, see these banners of our young men. So it's an interest to the city. The first exit you come to, that's the potential of the first exit. And uh, so it's an area of the city that, that uh, I think would be appreciated that kind of display. Um, we looked at the corridor of Hatch and Mitchell, but with the number of signal lights and the number of power lines and then other, other things that are there, adding that, the banner or whatever, um, with the number of poles that are available for display just wasn't the number that we wanted, um, which is amounted to 37 to 40. Um, if we included all of 4th Street down to uh, to the entrance of the freeway, uh, there's like 72 different uh, poles that we could use. But the ones by the businesses, 4th, 
are kind of mixed in with the trees and stuff. And as the leaves started coming out, we kind of noticed that there would be some conflict. It's like going through uh, the park down there, went for park. There's some poles through the park, but they're going to be obscured. Uh, so we kind of left those out of the diagram. And he here did an excellent job in going through with the little pins and pointing out all the poles that were available that gave us a good insight. So the money that we're asking for to get this program off the air, uh, it's not a great deal. And even going forward with the second round of ARP money, there could be some funding possibly set aside for this moving into the second year. And, uh, and that way that gives the committee and the city and the people looking for these uh, sponsors a couple of years to get these things in place <coughs> and ask for money to come in and go into the account that we set up uh, through the city's finance department as a line item so that money would stay there and just be used for, their, for this uh, for this purpose. So thank you for allowing us to do our work. And uh, we uh, certainly uh, hope to uh, get a positive review from you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Uh, Chavez, I have a question for you. So <clears throat> on the website, is there going to be information in regards to second phase, third phase on other streets? So that at least people know that that's, that opportunity is available. Yes, we can add that. Uh, that'll be added to the application. <coughs> so we'll post then, that, the application you guys on the, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but you guys as a committee can take that consideration where you guys would like to approach that. So that way, I, I mean, I would love this to be something that we have so many applicants that we don't have enough polls. I mean, that's wishful thinking, but I know that there's a lot of people out there who, who, who want to be a part of this. It's, it's, it's very important to, to the whole entire city. That was our discussion. So Good. our discussion is we filled all 37 here and say we had another is on the polls on, on um, hatch or six polls and you can put two per poll. Right and um, down the middle. That was a total. Yeah. So the total of maybe 12 we can put on. So that was our that was a discussion, but they want to focus on down. We had to overflow, then it would go to Hatch too. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions? One last question. The ARPA funds we're talking about spending for this are earmarked out of the money that we didn't use. No. We talked about earlier. Actually, no, it's, it's out of the fund of the 20,000 that was approved for downtown banners. Thank you. Any other questions, Council? Uh, double checking anybody on Zoom, your hands raised. There is no one wishing to speak, and we did not receive any written comments on this item. Okay, I'll bring this back to Council for a motion. I'll move to adopt resolution 2022 52. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Casey. Yes. Councilmember Klein. Yes. Vice Mayor Silvera. Yes. Mayor Lopez. Yes. Motion passes four zero. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Thank you, Mayor, Council Thank members. You. Okay, moving on to item number 17, resolution number 2022-53, approving a development impact fee credit agreement between the City of Ceres and the Ceres Gateway Center. You're up. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the Ceres Gateway Center is a 13 plus acre commercial development surrounded by Service Road, Mitchell Road, and Highway 99. On February 3rd, 2020, the Planning Commission approved the vesting tenant of parcel map to allow the property to subdivide into nine parcels for commercial development. On July 26th, 2021, the City Council, so this was last year, um, the City Council adopted Resolution 2021-77. Um, this approved parcel map and subdivision improvement agreement for the project. The agreement and conditions of approval for the project obligate the developer to construct certain improvements, including a traffic signal on service road. The city regularly charges public facility fees to new development to offset impacts to the city's public facilities pursuant to state law. The developer may receive fee credits toward the public facility fees for the project where the developer constructs improvements that are included in the city's public facility fees program. The service road uh, traffic signal is part of the, of the city's public facility fees program. So the city would have otherwise installed the signal 
as part of the city's planned infrastructure improvements. And that, that statement is also contained in the agreement that was approved by the city council in July of last year. The developer has agreed to install um, the, the traffic signal. And that, that agreement that I'm referencing from last year that council agreed to, um, it says that the developer would be entitled to and receive a fee credit against the payment of the public facility fees for the project in connection for constructing the, the in exchange for constructing uh, the service road traffic signal, which again, the city would have otherwise built. Uh, per council direction in the agreement from last year, um, the city has um, already granted the developer and the developer has already used a portion of the fee credit in the amount of approximately $294,000. Um, the, the cap that was set by the city council last year was $450,000 or the cost of installing the, uh, constructing the signal, whichever is less. Um, the purpose uh, tonight, the purpose of this proposed fee credit agreement is to amend the previous agreement in the following ways. Number one, to increase the amount of the fee credit to $489,410 from $450,000. This would be an increase of 38, sorry, um, $39,410, um, less than 10% increase. As a result of inflation and the addition of a um, pork chop median within the intersection that was added uh, after the council agreed in July of last year uh, to that cost. Uh, this pork chop median, it, uh, protect, it, it's a safety measure that was uh, agreed upon by all the engineers involved. It, it um, protects that intersection from cross traffic um, between varying driveways. Um, the, the second reason for this um, fee credit agreement tonight is to allow for assignability of the fee credit so that if, for example, a business in the series gateway center area applies for a, a building permit, the developer could assign some of that credit um, up to the amount that the city council has agreed upon. And uh, then the city would waive those credits, uh, sorry, would waive those permit, those public facility fees um, when, when that person, when that business comes to get a, a, a permit. Um, right now, that's not possible. The only entity that can receive the, the credit is the developer themselves. and. That while they have applied for building permits and had public facility fees waived, there may be other businesses in that in that series gateway center, for example, um, in an out burger or um, the quick pack car wash or another business that if they were to apply for the building permit themselves, right now it can't the the fee credit couldn't be assigned to them. So it creates a, an awkward situation for um, the city and for uh, the developer because, um, the developer needs to have those fee credits applied in order for them, for basically in order for the, the traffic signal to be built. Um, the third reason is to allow um, the city to reimburse the developer if a business within the Series Gateway Center were to pay the fees without first being assigned the credit. So if they get ahead of everybody and they, and they pay for those public facility fees, there needs to be a way to still credit the series gateway center developers. So I'm here for any questions. If you have any, thank you. Well, first off, Christopher, I want to thank you for answering all my questions. You know, I mean, which was quite a bit. And, you know, somebody reached out to me and I forwarded them to you and, and you did an excellent job. So I thank you. Um, you know, after reading this and, and it's just a fee, it's just an increase of 39,000 for you know, when I first looked at it, I thought it was an increase of $489,000. So, uh, you know, with the construction costs going up, you know, I, I, can, I, can, I can support this, but it goes, to the, it goes directly to the developer that's putting in the traffic signals that nobody else is entitled to. So I can support this. But on a caveat of this, the only thing I'm upset with, and I said it in my email, was, you know, we, we still have temporary traffic signals. Huh? I thought I seen them when I went through there today. Are they really? Then I apologize. Let's move on. I went through them today too, and I didn't. I going crap. Yeah, must be. Council, any other questions? Yes. 
it's uh, it's up to the public. Any comments from the public? Members on Zoom, and I see one hand raised. Daniel. Hello, can you hear us? Good evening, council members and Mayor Vieira. Can you hear me? Said Mayor Wood. Good Mayor evening. Wood. I couldn't hear you, I'm sorry. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? This is Daniel Ogden. Turn him up, please. Hi, Daniel. We can hear you, but you, you sound a little quiet. Are you able to turn up your microphone? Speak up. Good evening, everyone. I hope you guys can hear me well. I'm sorry. I was called in last minute to appear at this uh, meeting. I was actually out at my son's baseball game, but I think uh, Chris Holm, I'm a, I'm a developer. I'm on behalf of Series Gateway Center. I've been on this project with my originally my father, Ralph Ogden, who started this back in 2004, 2005, and got it up almost operational, was getting ready to um, uh, uh, pull permits and start construction in 2008, and then, of course, hit the, hit the crash, and we've been a long road to hoe to get to this point. I um, am greatly proud to have partnered alongside the city in the development of this project along with my father, my late father who passed away in 2017. And to see the, pro the, the uh, progress of the project to date uh, is just really incredible um, and exciting uh, to see. And, you know, just to get to the points, the merit that Chris laid out, the increase in the subdivision and improvement agreement requests has uh, zero pass-through benefit to the developer. In fact, we negotiated with the contractor to negotiate the profit and overhead down, in fact, to reduce the cost of the city, to reduce the overall installation of the, of the uh, signal on service. And I can tell you firsthand, because I was in the, the, in, the, in the meetings, of course, as the developers that have been working this project, um, directly with Tom Westbrook, uh, and the entire intent uh, when we were initially drafting this was, of course, reimbursement of the signal, because this was a linchpin in order for us to get the project off the ground. And that was, you know, in 2020, and then as Chris said, in 2021, well, costs have just blown out of control and I have change orders for materials alone that way exceed not any design change not any change in uh, 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 concept it's just materials that blow the request that's before the council uh, out of the water tonight and so really it's just a, a way that you know this agreement and our, our request could be fulfilled and satisfied, which the original intent of the agreement was to just pass through the, the cost through the public facilities fees in its, in its deal entirely. The good news I will tell you is as um, the mayor indicated, the, the, uh, uh, the, the temporary signals are now removed and we actually have the, the poles on site uh, and we're going through the process of trying to get those up as with our infrastructure contractor um, as we as we speak i mean we've got still some process to complete but that is a very very long lead item as uh, the city is very likely aware and so i would just respectfully request that the council member approve this just this is a, a to me is an uh, original intent item that goes to the reality of doing deals for now 15 years and finally seeing it to fruition and it's just the actual cost of what's laid before it. So hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm sorry. Again, I was called last minute, but that's it for me. No worries, Daniel. Thank you. Okay. Did we receive any emails? There were no written comments on this item. Okay. Looking for a motion. Move to approve resolution 2022-53. Roll call, please. Councilmember Casey? Yes. Councilmember Klein? Yes. Vice Mayor Silvera? Yes. Mayor Lopez? Yes. Motion passes 4-0. Okay, there is no discussion items. Any council member referrals? No referrals. 
Moving on to reports. I have no reports. City Council, any reports? Just one. Uh, we'll have one more meeting the night before our first concerts in the park on June 14th. So come out and see Gotcha Covered, sponsored by Sam's Cafe for our first uh, concerts in the park for 2022. There'll be food available from a few different vendors, and it will continue for six weeks every Tuesday starting on June 14th. Okay. Alex? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. You probably noticed uh, a new individual at the staff table. So just want to take a moment to introduce the city's new engineering director, Kevin Waugh. Kevin, maybe raise your hand so we know who you are. That's Kevin. Um, Kevin comes to the city with more than 20 years of experience managing construction and engineering projects uh, in the domestic and international mar markets, as more than, also has more than five years of facilities management. His engineering projects include five nuclear power plant design projects, an environmental Superfund cleanup site, uh, mixed use development projects in Southeast Asia, and several military facility projects in the Middle East and North Africa, including water and wastewater treatment facilities, airports, roads, uh, dams, and bridges. Uh, Kevin has six years of California public sector experience, having worked as a capital improvement project manager, uh, with Butte County, uh, Director of Maintenance Operations and Transportation with the Thermalito Union School District, uh, and Director of Bond Construction with Vista Unified School District. Uh, Kevin has a bachelor's degree in zoology from UC Davis, uh, a bachelor's degree in civil engineering uh, from Cal State University Chico, a JD from Chase College of Law, uh, a mat an MBA uh, with the University of Hawaii, and is currently pursuing a master's of law degree in construction law and arbitration. Uh, so uh, extensive educational experience, extensive professional experience, um, but I uh, hate to disappoint, but we won't be building any nuclear power plants <laughs> uh, in series. Sorry, Kevin. Uh, Welcome. Anyway, uh, please join me in welcoming Kevin. Looking forward to working with you, Kevin. Welcome. Anything else, Alex? Uh, nothing else. I don't know if Kevin wants, if, if the mayor, if you. Sorry. Yeah. I just wanted to say thank you and I'm uh, really pleased to serve. Uh, I'm here to help and uh, I'm into transparent communication and I'll do everything I can to improve the infrastructure and the quality of life for the citizens of the city of Syria. Thank you. City attorney. No report, mayor. Apartments. <clears throat> Seeing none, is our county supervisor online? Doesn't look like it. Okay. We will, we will now adjourn this meeting to go to closed session for a conference regarding a public employee performance evaluation. If there's anyone from the public that would like to speak in regards to the closed session item, after the closed session, I'll return the report out. Thank you.
Hello everyone, reportable action in the city council was direction was given to staff. That ends the meeting tonight. It is now 829. Thank you everyone.